While watching the online lectures, be sure to use the attached packet to take notes on. You'll find the link for the packet here at the title page for each chapter. Click on it, then print out the packet. These gray boxes in the online lectures refer to the slides and pages in the packet. In this online lecture, we're going to discuss how to create what's called splitting diagrams. This is for structures that give complex splitting on the HNMR. There's a way to evaluate them, and it involves using J values and things called tree diagrams. And I'm going to explain it all to you here, but let's look at our key points. What are we trying to get out of this online lecture? Number one, we're going to see that splitting diagrams can be generated for complex splitting in an NMR spectra. We also want to make sure we see that generating splitting diagrams involves using the n plus 1 rule separately, very important, separately for each neighboring hydrogen along with the j values. This is going to be key to the skill here. And number three, splitting diagrams can determine if certain peaks will overlap, resulting in less peaks than expected. Okay, remember we learned before that sometimes the n plus 1 rule doesn't work. But we're going to see now in this lecture why it doesn't work. But let's do it via example. Let's say you have this molecule right here. How many hydrogens or types of hydrogens does he have? Well, let's call these the A-type hydrogens. Let's call this the B-type hydrogens right here. And we'll call this hydrogen the C-type hydrogen. Now remember, if you wanted to calculate the N value for the B hydrogen, he is being split by neighboring A hydrogen and he's also being split by neighboring C hydrogen. And remember that rule, if the two neighboring hydrogens are not the same, then the N plus 1 rule fails. In other words, we couldn't say N equals 2, so therefore B should be a triplet on the HNMR spectrum. But we can use a certain type of analysis to figure out how many split peaks we're going to get for the B hydrogen. And that's what I want to show you here, okay? The way you think of it is this. We're focusing on the B hydrogen. So let's say this line right here, that represents the original signal, unsplit. We know he's going to be a signal on the HNMR because he is a B hydrogen that exists in a certain environment. And what we're doing, like we saw in the key points, is in order to figure out his splitting, you do the splitting separately, meaning you handle each side one at a time. Let me explain that. For instance, let's do the splitting just for the left side first. Meaning, what is the N value for the B hydrogen due to the left A hydrogen splitting him? So just focusing on the left side, there is only one hydrogen here. So the N value for the left side of the B hydrogen equals 1. And then using the N plus 1 rule, of course, N plus 1 equals 2. So just the A hydrogen by itself, remember we're isolating him, we're ignoring the C hydrogen here, just A by itself would split B into a doublet. Because again, the N plus 1 equals 2. And let's label it appropriately. Remember, the distance between peaks is measured by J values, and the way that we would label that particular J value would be the JBA. Again, that means the J value for the B hydrogen being split by the A hydrogen. So that takes care of the left side. Now let's focus our attention and do the same exact thing on the right side. What is the N value for the B hydrogen on the just the right? Well, on the right side, he only has the C hydrogen as a neighbor. So N for the right side equals 1. That means that the C hydrogen alone by itself would, applying the N plus 1 rule, N plus 1 equals 2, that C hydrogen would split the B hydrogen into two peaks as a doublet. And here's where we start to expand our diagram here. This is what we're saying. Remember, the first signal was split into two, and now the end of the signal right here, he is now going to be split into a doublet. And not only that, this signal as well is going to be split into a doublet. And let's use the labeling here. What is the distance between these two new doublets? They would be J, B, C. Again, it'd be the distance between these peaks for the B hydrogen being split by the C hydrogen. This diagram helps us determine 
the number of split peaks in the HNMR for the B hydrogen. And here's how it works. Let's say, boom, this is our HNMR spectrum right here. Then at the ends of those lines, where those lines end, that's where peaks are going to be, meaning like this right here. At the end of each line, we should expect a peak. So basically, what we determine is that the B hydrogen is going to be split into four peaks like that. And those four peaks right here, notice one might be tempted to call them a quartet. But remember, this doesn't have the markings of a quartet. Remember in a quartet, the two middle peaks are three times greater than the end peaks, where these peaks look the same height. So instead of calling this a quartet, we appropriately call it a doublet of doublets. Think about this for a second. If you were to use the n plus 1 rule for b, let's say we want to use the n plus 1 rule, we're going to find the n value for b, and we're going to do it the old way that we learned. We would then look at the neighboring hydrogens. He has two neighbors, HA and HC, so his n value would equal 2. And 2 plus 1 equals 3. So the n plus 1 rule would tell us that the B hydrogen should be a triplet. But now that we drew our diagram, we notice it wouldn't be actually a triplet. It actually is four peaks, a doublet of doublets. That is why we're saying that the n plus 1 rule will fail when the neighboring hydrogens are different. And what we're learning here basically is this. In summary, the signal for the B hydrogen from the A hydrogen on the left, if you isolate him, the A hydrogen is taking that signal and splitting it into two, a doublet. So now we have, let's say, two signals at this point, or two peaks. But then on the right side, the C hydrogen is also causing B to doublet. But it's causing the two peaks that we created from the A hydrogen to be split into doublets themselves. That's why we call this a doublet of doublets. Let's look at a little more complex example to really make sure we understand how this works. Again, let's try to predict the splitting patterns for the B hydrogen. And let's label our hydrogens. Let's say that's the A hydrogen. This right here is the B hydrogen. And we got the C hydrogen right here. We notice that the B hydrogen has the A hydrogens as a neighbor. And he also has the C hydrogen as a neighbor. And since they're two different hydrogens, we can expect the n plus 1 rule to fail. And we can expect complex splitting, which means let's try to generate one of our splitting tree diagrams to figure out the splitting. Again, we begin with the original signal of the B hydrogen. And we do each side separately. For this example, I want you to see that it doesn't matter which side you start with. In the last example, we started with the left side, and then we did the right. But this time, I'm going to do the right and go to the left. It doesn't change your answer. You end up with the same thing. So let's calculate the n value on the right side of the B hydrogen. Again, we're looking at how many neighbors he has on the right. Those would be the C hydrogens. That's three hydrogens that exist there. The n plus 1 rule here would say that the C hydrogens would split the B hydrogen into a quartet, or four peaks. So our original signal right here will be split into four peaks. And let's label them appropriately. The distances between these split peaks, their j values, would be called j, b, c. Now we could go to the left side of the B hydrogen and focus on the n value due to the left side. So the n value for the B hydrogen on the left, we notice that there are two A hydrogens. So n equals 2 in this case. So using the n plus 1 rule, n plus 1 equals 3. That means our four signals, each one of them, is going to be split again into triplets now, which means we'd have something that looks like this right here. Notice, each ending peak has been split into 3. And let's label them appropriately. The distance between them would be labeled the JBA value. Now, since we've completed our diagram, we're ready now to predict the number of peaks here. Remember, we just know that at every endpoint of each one of these lines is a peak. So doing that means that this is all the peaks that we would see here. Notice, 
very, very many. That's a lot of peaks. In fact, it's so many peaks that you don't even call it a triplet, quartet, or anything like that. Remember, when we have a whole bunch of bunched up peaks together, we would simply call this signal a multiplet. So this diagram is showing us why the B hydrogen signal would be split into a multiplet. Now let's focus on a specific problem now. That's the theory, but let's try to solve this problem here. It says, provide the splitting diagram for HB, for the B hydrogen, given that the J value for JBA is 10 hertz and the JBC value is also 10 hertz. In this example, we're given specific values, actual values for J. And let's see how this affects our answer. Again, we're focusing on the B hydrogen, so we think of the original B signal, and we do each side separately. Let's calculate the N value on the left side. How many neighboring hydrogens on the left for hydrogen B? Well, there's only one, that's the A hydrogen. So on the left side, N equals one, N plus one rule would say, then we get two. So A would split the B hydrogen into a doublet, like this. And remember, we saw from the setup of the question here that the JBA value is 10 hertz. Notice right here, that's what it says. The JBA value is 10 hertz. That means the distance between this splitted peak would be 10 hertz. And let's label that there right there so we can keep track of this. We're now ready to focus on the other side here, so let's go to the right. What is the N value on the right side? Well, how many neighbors on the right? The neighbor is the C hydrogen. Again, there's only one, so the N value on the right side equals one, and the N plus one rule would then equal two. So that means the signals that are left over are again split into a doublet. So these end peaks right here would be doubletted. And remember, the setup of the problem says that the JBC values would be 10 hertz, so that means the distance between these peaks would be equally 10 hertz. Notice, having these values, we can see that this right here, we have an overlap. The two signals that meet right here are actually on top of each other. So watch what happens when we go to draw our splitting diagram here. When we turn the ends of each one of these lines into signals, we get something that looks like this right here. I want you to notice two things about this signal right here. Notice it's higher, or we can say it has more area under its curve, because remember, we know that that signal right there corresponds to two overlapping signals. So think of those two overlapping signals as being additive creating a twice as high or twice as area under the curve signal. And here's the other thing to notice. Since those signals are overlapping, we don't distinguish them as two separate peaks. So that means for the B hydrogen, with these J values, we should expect to see a triplet. So the point is here, if we're given J values, we can determine if peaks overlap. And that's what I want you to know here is that when you draw a splitting diagram, sometimes the splits can overlap. We saw in the previous example that the splits didn't overlap. I didn't give you the J values for the previous examples. I was only just using it to show you how to at least split up. But let's assume that for those earlier examples, the J values were a certain values that didn't allow the peaks to overlap. What matters most is the ability for us to create one of these splitting diagrams use J values, and determine if there is overlapping or not. So, what's it all about here? What have we learned? Key point number one, remember, splitting diagrams can be generated for complex splitting in an HNMR spectra. Key point number two, what have we learned here? Generating splitting diagrams involves using the N plus one rule separately for each neighboring hydrogen along with using the J values. And of course, third key point, splitting diagrams can determine if certain peaks will overlap, resulting in less peaks than expected. So all of this overall basically enables us to override when the N plus one rule fails in HNMR. We are still able to calculate 
the splitting of peaks.